Okay, hi everybody. We're going to get started with today's lesson on pronouns. And just before we get into everything, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Megan Lodge, one of the English instructors with Penn Foster High School. I've been with Penn Foster since 2006, and if you ever need to get a hold of me, you can reach me several different ways. You can call the school or email me by using the Contact Us button, but you can also reach me by looking for Penn Foster Megan on Facebook or Google+, or you can search for me by my full name on the Penn Foster community. If you haven't joined the community, I would really suggest that you do because it's a great place to interact with your other classmates and the faculty, and there's a lot of documents out there for help. And, of course, I also have a Twitter, so you can follow me on Twitter. I'll follow you back, and I love having friends on all of those mediums. So before we get into the actual topic of pronouns, we want to cover why English is an important subject. Since it's since English is a subject where information builds on itself, it's important to have a good understanding of the basics, like parts of speech, to help with more challenging concepts you'll encounter down the road. So this is just a brief video that goes over the bigger picture of why English is important to know. Alright, so that was just a little video to get us started about English. And now we're really going to get into the pronouns. And we're going to start by what the learning objectives for today's are going to be. Um, so upon the completion of this webinar, you'll be able to define a pronoun, know the classification of pronouns, understand how pronouns work, and understand antecedents. So before getting started with the nitty-gritty of pronouns, I have another short video to show you about pronouns. And if you like Mapplemore and Ryan Lewis, you'll probably get a kick out of this one. I'm looking for pronouns, because I know sentences often have them. Ha 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 honey, looking for some of them. I hope I can find some. First we gotta see what's the function of a pronoun. Pretty much something I don't know much about. If I mess things up, I hope nobody sees me. My teacher says, using pronouns is so easy. So I know it's like a noun, because noun is in the name, but it's different than a noun. Not exactly the same. It's a word that sneaks up, takes the place of a noun. Let me try and use some. I'm going to start now. Oh. And I hope that it makes sense. My friend's shoes were blue. Yeah, they were blue. They was the pronoun that I just used. They just had ten cents. Yeah, she had a dime. She is the pronoun I used that time. I'm going to take your grandma's chair. I'm going to take 
his chair. His is the pronoun I use right there. Things will be repetitive without pronouns. You gotta use different words to switch things around. I'm looking for pronouns, because I know sentences often have them. I, I, I'm on it, looking for some of them. I hope I can find some. Now pronouns are easy. They're not so hard to see. Him, her, I, he, and she. You, us, this, those, that, and we. Now pronouns are easy. Yeah. They're not so hard to see. Uh -huh. Him, her, I, he, and she. You, us, this, those, that, and me. Oh. I'm looking for pronouns. Cause I know sentences often have them. I, I, I'm hunting, looking for some of them. I hope I can find some. I'm looking for pronouns. Cause I know sentences often have them. I, I, I'm looking for, for some of them. I hope I can find some. I can make a song for you. Okay, so now anytime you hear the song, instead of thinking about thrift shops, you're going to be thinking about pronouns. Um, I'm a big fan of music, and I think it helps with remembering certain things. So that's why I include a lot of videos like this in the presentation. So now we're going to go on to a quick noun recap. Um, because to understand pronouns, you have to understand what nouns are. So the basic definition of a noun is that it's a person, like a scientist, place, like a mall, thing like a flower, or it can be a quality or idea of like love. So if that's what a noun is, what is a pronoun? Simply stated, pronouns take the place of nouns. So I have a couple examples up here, and we're going to start with Tina Fey first. Um, using pronouns can help make sentences easier to read. So if we have the sentence, since Tina Fey was on Saturday Night Live, Tina Fey has been very successful. It's not easy to read, and it doesn't really roll off the tongue very well. So to clean this one up, you, to add a pronoun, you would just simply say, since Tina Fey was on Saturday Night Live, she has been very successful. It makes it much easier to read and actually easier to hear, too. And next up we has Will Smith, which I feel bad for having to use this sentence, since typically he's a good actor. But Will Smith just won a Razzie for the movie Will Smith was in with Will Smith's son. It just sounds clunky, another example of not rolling off the tongue easily. So we're going to clean it up with using pronouns. So we could say, Will Smith just won a Razzie for the movie he was in with his son. And I made myself the last example here to show how pronouns, you're also going to be using them in the first person. So instead of me going around saying, Megan's hair was blowing in the wind while Megan was taking a picture of Megan on a ferry, which is just weird referring to myself in third person like that. I would just say my hair was blowing in the wind while I was taking a picture of myself on a ferry. So now that we know what a pronoun is, we're going to go over the different classifications of them. It seems easy enough when you say a pronoun just replaces a noun, but when you see the way it's broken down here, there's actually six different category, categories of pronouns, and it's important to at least have a basic understanding of them so you know how they work within a sentence. So the first thing we're going to start with are personal pronouns. And first person personal pronouns indicate the speaker. So if the two women in this picture were talking, they may say something like, we love to walk our dogs. That would be in first person because they're the ones doing the talking. Then we have second person, which indicates the person being spoken to, which in this case would be everyone attending the webinar. And I would say, you need to understand pronouns. That would be talking in the second person. And lastly, we have third person, which indicates the person or thing being spoken about. And in this case, and especially because the way the weather has been throughout most of the country, I picked someone falling in the snow. So we could just say, she fell in the snow because it's the person we're talking about. And next up, we have possessive pronouns. And I think this is one of the best examples to show what a possessive pronoun is. It's from the movie Finding Nemo. Hey, hey, say that again. You just 
Kanisa ka ni Barney mo. Go, go, sir. Fight, fight, fight! Fight! Okay, first I just want to share that I agree with the Pelican, what their view on seagulls are. I don't like seagulls because I just think they try to stalk me when I'm around the beach, so that's another reason why I like this scene. Um, so possessive pronouns basically show ownership. So in that example from Finding Nemo, we have all the seagulls staking a claim to this one little crab by saying that they're my, that he's mine. Um, but thankfully the crab managed to get, manages to get away and with some style at that. Next up, we have demonstrative pronouns, and these are used to point out definite persons, places, things, or ideas. Um, when you use the words this and these, you, you want to use them only when you're pointing out something nearby. Like, for example, I could say, these books on the table don't belong to me, and that would show that the books that I'm talking about are in close physical proximity to me. And on the flip side of that, we have that and those. And these are used for far away things in thought and position. So for that one, I could say that car down the street will never make the green light. And that shows that the physical distance between me and the car that I'm talking about is pretty sizable. And next we have interrogative pronouns. And for this one, I have another little video clip, um, interrogative questions. Interrogative pronouns ask questions, and I think Jimmy Fallon's version of Abbott and Costello's Who's On First is a great example of how you can use them and how you really shouldn't use them, too, because obviously the baseball players are going to be really confused. Oh! I tell you, Jimmy, you know what I love? Jimmy, I love baseball. When we get to see you tell me the guy's name from the team so when I see him at that big St. Louis ballpark, I'll be able to know those fellas. All right, but you know, strange as it may seem, they give these ballplayers nowadays very peculiar names. Funny names. Nicknames. Pet names. Now, on the St. Louis team, we have who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. That's what I'm trying to find out. I'm telling you, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. You know the fellow's name? Yes. So who's playing first? Yes. I mean, fellow first base. Who? Fellow playing first base for St. Louis. Who? The guy on first base. Who's on first? Why are you asking me for? I'm not asking you. I'm telling you who is on first. The guy talking about me? Okay, so I hope everyone got a laugh out of that one, and it goes to show that there are worse baby names out there than what we see some of the celebrities give today. 
Um, I would encourage you, if you liked that, if you want to YouTube Abbott and Costello, who is on first, you can watch the entire um, kind of skit with it, and it really is funny. So I encourage you to go out and check that. Um, but just to recap, interrogative pronouns, they're going to be asking questions. And rounding everything out are relative pronouns. And these, I'm sorry, we're not rounding out. We've got one more after this. But relative pronouns show relationships by introducing a new idea into a sentence. So if I have the sentence, my sister loves cookies, but I wanted to introduce something else about her into it, I can use a relative pronoun to do that. So I'm going to use the relative pronoun who, who, and we could have the sentence, my sister who lives in New York loves cookies. So this way we know that my sister not only loves cookies, but she also lives in New York, which is true on both accounts, by the way. And this rounds everything up, and I promise this time, this is the last classification, are indefinite pronouns. And these just refer to unspecified nouns or to things in general. It'd be like saying, I saw someone run down the block. So now that we have all the different classifications done, um, it's important to know that pronouns are going to function in sentences the exact same way that a, a noun would. So a pronoun can be the subject of a sentence, like we laughed at Tara's joke. We's the subject because that's the group of people doing the action of laughing. It can be the object of a sentence, like Josh fixed it. It is receiving the action of being fixed, so that makes it the object and an indirect object, which this is the person or thing to or for whom the action of the verb is done. So in this case, we'll break it down a little bit more. George would be the subject of the sentence because he's doing the action of painting. And picture would be the object because that's what's receiving the action of being painted. And that would make her the indirect object because that's who's, um, excuse me, that is who the object, the action of the verb is being done. A little bit of a tongue twister there. Next up, a pronoun can be a subject complement. Um, and for example, we have here, it was she who called last night. And a subject complement is a word that completes a linking verb and describes or defines the subject. So in this sentence, was is the linking verb, and she would be the pronoun that completes and describes what it is, or who she is, rather. And then last up, we have object of a preposition. Um, this is a noun or a pronoun that follows a preposition, like beside, in, under, above, and it completes its meaning. Prepositions must have an object. If you didn't get to prepositions yet, the basic definition is that they are words that indicate relationships. So for this example, we have the wall crumbled behind him. Behind is the preposition. And him would be the object of the preposition to complete the meaning. One of the biggest debates that goes on when it comes to pronouns in English in general, it comes up a lot, is who versus whom. <clears throat> so I thought I'd touch on this a little bit. You want to use who when it's used as the subject. So we just learned that the subject of a sentence does the action. So that's when you want to use the word who. Whom is used as an object, so it receives the action, so you should only use it as the object of a sentence. And Grammar Girl, who I'm a big fan of, um, she's on the Quick and Dirty Tips site, um, along with a lot of other things. Um, but she gives a lot of everyday examples and tricks to help out when it comes to grammar issues. So I thought I'd use hers to help you out for when you should use who versus whom. And basically what she says is that when choosing between who or whom, ask if the answer to the question would be he or him. So the example that I have here is that who or whom drove you to the store, drove you to the movies rather. Um, if you can answer the question using he, you'd want to use who. So when you have that question, who or whom drove you to the movies, since you can answer he drove you to the movies, you'd want to use who. And if you can answer using him, you'd use the pronoun whom. So we have here, who or whom do you know? Since you can answer or ask again too, do you know him? You'd want to use whom. A good way of remembering this is that for the trick, him and whom that you'd use together, if they can replace each other, both end in an M. 
So you can't talk about pronouns without talking about antecedents as well. Um, pronouns should typically refer to a noun that came earlier. And this person, place, thing, or idea that the pronoun replaces is called the antecedent. And it should agree with it, the antecedent in number and gender. So if you're talking about Tina Fey, like we did in that sentence earlier, and you say he instead of she, that wouldn't be correct because it wouldn't agree, wouldn't agree because Tina Fey is female. And clarity is important in the antecedent and pronoun relationship. And in the next slide, we're going to see why. And we're going to give some examples here. We're back to Tina Fey. I'm a big Tina Fey fan, so you know, third time she's come up today. So in the sentence that we used earlier, we have, since Tina Fey was on Saturday Night Live, she has been very successful. She is highlighted in red here, since that's the pronoun. But the antecedent would be Tina Fey, since that's what the pronoun replaces. And here's poor Will Smith again in his Razzie. But here we have Will Smith just won a Razzie for the movie he was in with his son. The pronoun he and his are highlighted in red, and their antecedent would be Will Smith. And this brings us to why you need to be clear when you use antecedents and pronouns. If you have the sentence, Joan called Carol on her lunch break, that's unclear because we don't know who's on their lunch break. Is it Joan or is it Carol? So when you're writing and you come across something like this when you're proofreading, it's something to keep an eye out for. Just know that you do want to fix it. And you can fix it by completely rearranging the sentence to make the meaning clear. So in this case, I changed it to, while Joan was on her lunch break, she called Carol. So it makes it clear that Joan was on, the lunch break, on her lunch break, not Carol. So that wraps up that, the lesson portion on pronouns. All right, so I think that's going to about wrap everything up. Thanks to everyone for attending and for the questions. So everyone enjoy the rest of your Friday afternoon and have a good weekend, everybody.